Dan, how are you? Doing good, Carter. Thanks for having me on here. Yeah, thanks for being here. We're gonna we're gonna give this a go. This is, I think, <laughs> uh, probably gonna be our first official podcast we have released. So appreciate you doing this with us. Yeah, thanks for thinking of me. Um, so for anyone who doesn't know Dan, um, Dan, you are the owner of the Click Hatch, correct? Yep. Cool. Um, we've had the pleasure of you know getting to work with you over the course of the last couple months and somehow wrangled you into to what we're doing and it's been really awesome for us to see you know what you're able to do with some of the guides and outfitters that we work with and it's it's been a really great kind of partnership we've been able to create and I know our guides love working with you and have seen a lot of success from the things that you do um, and you fit really well into kind of what our mission is of being able to help enable people to make a better living doing what they love in the outdoors. And um, just wanted to, to compliment you on that, that, you know, you really do a great job with all your clients and we've seen it. And our clients have a lot of really good things to say about you. So we appreciate you. Nice, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, so I guess let's start with, tell me a little bit about yourself and Take me back to kind of the beginning of what you do and what the click hatch is and you know what you do for guides and outfitters. Sounds good. So I'll, I'll start at the beginning, I guess. And I, I kind of took an unconventional route to getting to the click hatch here. Um, out of college, and this was like close to 12 years ago or so now, um, I started with a startup right out of college. And my role there involved everything from building the website, managing the website, all the advertising and marketing, email marketing, customer service. Um, I was working closely with the founder, so I was involved in all the financial aspects. So without really any, you know, preparation or a boss or any, uh, you know, syllabus as far as what to do in my job, it was kind of on me to figure all that out. So it was a really nice, like, boot camp, you know, early on in my career, I guess, to learn all those different pieces of a business, how they all work together. And then, you know, it's, it, I feel like it set me up as a nice little training platform to get me to where I am now. And then in between there... Uh, once I left the startup and they're still they're still going, I just left for the the agency side of things. Um, I joined an advertising agency and helped them build up the advertising arm of their their agency, online marketing, and was you know running Facebook ads, Instagram ads, LinkedIn, YouTube, Google ads, any sort of online placement for normal businesses, you know every service businesses, ed, education technology companies, hospitals, like you know you name it, everything. And I'm a passionate fisherman. I was you see you see the the backdrop here. Uh, all my fly tying and rods up here. So it was only natural that while I'm doing all this advertising for these other companies, I was constantly thinking, how can I apply this to my passions and what my friends are passionate about and you know what I'm just involved in outside of my nine to five. And I've always kind of from the beginning, by the very nature of working at a startup, it was always a self-starter. I was always working at night, you know, in the off hours and weekends, just not because I had to, just because it was kind of the drive that came with going down that kind of career path. So in the evening hours, uh, when I was at that agency, all my fishing guides up here, I'm based in New York, but all my you know buddies up here are fishing guides. So it started, it was like, it clicked. I'm like running these Google ads and like, I'm like wow, like this, this is the perfect fit for fishing guides, charters, lodge, like anyone who's looking with intent to find a trip is gonna pull up a phone, open the Google app, type something in, you know, X location fishing guides or fly fishing in X location, you know, and it really, it clicked and was like, wow, like it really, it could be that easy. And maybe this is my path to like being, being able to work in my passion. Same thing that you guys are doing with Go Guide and like making a difference for other people's businesses, like with a direct, tangible impact. So I started doing that as a side hustle while I was at the agency and it worked so well with a couple of guides here, like one in the Adirondacks, one in the Salmon River in, in Pulaski and, and some of the other freestone streams here in New York. But it worked so well. I just started, you know, slowly branching out, slowly snowballed, and uh, got to the point where I could make the jump from the agency life into doing this full time. And now it's, I think, it being it's it's a really nice intersection of being passionate about what I what I do and and not having many of us out there who are offering advertising services or you know web services specifically for the fishing industry and like only for the fishing industry. So. I think the, the, the big difference of, of me getting here and, and having a little bit of background across you know, all those components of business and running you know the business back then uh, kind of allows me to be able to do this for myself and for other guides and help them grow their businesses and 
yeah, so now it's I'm you know doing this full time. I work just with guides and, and lodges and and charters. Started with just with fly fishing as my passion and kind of you know, grew outside of that. And now this really works. It, it's the same kind of scenario that that's a plug and play kind of setup for any charter business. I mean, really, it, you figure, you know, someone we have to skip around and talk about fishing poker here, but it's so different now. Why these Google Ads and this kind of service is so important now. Um, five ten years ago, the, really the the way someone found a trip was through directories or through you know a, a booking you know marketplace like, like fishing booker they were really the only one at the time uh, and now everyone's got a phone everyone's got the google app on their phone and it's as easy as like knowing where you're visiting or knowing where, where you want to go fish and you just you, you just type that in and, and all of a sudden you know you're you're finding trips and you're finding outfitters on your own so it's so important now for guides to have that presence online where they used to be able to build a site and, you know, be able to position themselves somewhere in there, get some love. And then it, it just went as far as building your website. Now it goes so much further beyond that. Um, so yeah, so I, as a business now, I'm just connecting with guides and helping them not have to think about where their next trip comes from. And it's just, I'm moving all these pieces in the background um, to help new trips coming their way. And it's, it's intent driven. It's people who are actively already looking for your trips and it's just, it really is as simple as taking someone who's currently not getting found for those phrases and helping them get found for those phrases and, you know, just get your hat in the ring and all of a sudden your phone's ringing because people are, are looking for you and being able to find you. So, um, yeah, it's been a nice a nice path for me getting here. Now it's like I can't imagine doing anything else. I just, you know, thinking about fishing all day long and helping other guides fish. So, yeah, the tough part is getting away from the screen and finding time to actually go fishing now. But. Um, so yeah, that was a long winded answer of, of what I do here. And we'll get into more of like the nuts and bolts of what I actually do. But, um, yeah, that's kind of the background and why I feel like it's nice to hop on the phone with another, you know, a, a guide client and, and get on a web call and this opens up and it's, it's not, you know, I'm not in a cubicle at Google. I'm not, you know, I'm not at some big firm doing stuff for everybody. It's just, I'm a fisherman helping other fishermen grow their business, you know, and that's, that's really as, as simple as it is. So it's consider myself pretty lucky to be able to do, do this kind of stuff. I'm sure you feel the same way. I do. I mean, that's, that's awesome. So there were a couple of things that stood out to me and I think in general startups are really good for that to, to go right out of college and be yep. able to just right dive into straight yep. into the deep end and have to figure stuff out. And it sets you up really well for, for the future of you learn a lot more broadly across many yep. different things. Um, the other thing that, that stood out to me that you said was, that sometimes fishing guides are a little bit naive on the importance of yeah. having a presence. And um, I've also seen from my conversations with the guides and outfitters that it's even more important today than it was three years ago. COVID yeah. really made more people conducive to booking online. We yeah. have one client who increase their bookings online after COVID by like 35% over one year. And that was a huge jump in how many of their customers were booking online. And I think it's just because the world is changing that way that people are more comfortable with doing it. And there's, there's better systems to be able to make that happen. Um, so I think for us, like when we started working with you, it was a very natural pairing of being yeah. able to have conversions through the online booking system and then have you be the lead generation behind it because the same way that you know you wanted to start your own thing and do what you were passionate about in the fishing industry that's what all of these guides and all these outfitters are yeah. doing you know they're entrepreneurs too and every entrepreneur's biggest problem at least from the starting standpoint is how do i get more clients and that's something that you're able to to help people with a lot yeah. so, and then too on the flip side of that it's it's, you know, it's more people looking to book online. And then on the flip side for the guides, the barrier to entry for a guide to get set up and start taking trips is next to nothing. You know, it's most sites, so it's, most states don't even need a license. Like I'm in New York, which you do, but you know, Vermont right next to me, you can just go and guide anybody without a license or, you know, without anything. So it's, you know, anybody can jump on Wix or Squarespace or WordPress and set up a, a, a website and, you know, put some posts on social media and all of a sudden you're a guide, you know, so it's, you have so many, every market is now flooded with websites that are just popping up. And like, I, you know, I hear from people on, you know, all ends of the spectrum on, on the far of how, how, how legit or how set up their, their guide service is. But, you know, you hear from people who have been in an industry for a while or who have held down a market for a while 
and had no problem getting trips. And now all of a sudden there's, you know, three, four, five outfitters that they've never heard of sitting above them in search results. And they're, you know, they reach out to me and they're, you know, Hey, what's going on? Like, we need to be back up here. We used to be at the top and we're not getting as many calls, blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, you know, it's like anybody can just get a website going and, you know, not everybody gets to be right at the top right away, but Google ads. I mean, you build a website, you start Google ads, you turn them on tomorrow. You're ranked at number one. You know, if, if you're, if you're yeah. willing to, to invest in and like, you know, bid properly to get yourself to sit there, but it's so easily doable that that's, I mean, it's, it's great for me. It's great for you, but for guides, it's such a competitive place now where you used to be able to just, you know, Hey, I'm a guide. Now you can like people find you. And now people try to approach it the same way where they set up a site, they, you know, they, they buy all this gear, they have everything ready to go. Their boat's ready. They don't think about where the trips come from. You know, it's like, I'll, I'll post all day on social media. You know, I have a following on Instagram, mostly their friends and like local community people, you know, it's like, you know, meme pages. And, and then you start posting you're like, well, I'm not getting any new people finding me. It's like, well, you you launched a site and now it's buried on, you know, page three or four of Google. So mm-hmm. people, I'm trying to, more of these conversations I have with guys, I'm trying to convince them that Google ads, marketing, advertising, it's just one more component of your business expense, like your overall cost of doing business. Like you, you pay for your insurance, you pay for your permits or whatever. You got all your gear, you know, thousands of dollars into boats and gears. And, you know, then they, they don't, they don't think about where those trips come from. So yeah. I try to convince these newer guys that like when you're starting out, like you have to work those costs in and think like, okay, if I, if I, if I spend 500, a thousand dollars on, you know, advertising my business for a month, if I do that for 12 months, like what impact does that have on my business? Like, is that, is that 5,000, 10,000 a year budget towards marketing and advertising? Does that translate into more revenue for me? And if you do this well with Google ads, you should only be showing getting clicks from people who are matching the pure intent of the trips that you offer. You shouldn't be, you know, getting clicks from people looking for bait shops when you're a fly guide somewhere or have a, you know, a, yeah. it's just, you, it's so intent focused. It's an intent all day long. People probably get so sick of me saying intent on my phone calls because it's just, you have to go for people who are literally searching, you know, X location, fishing guides, fishing charters, fishing lodge. It, it's really that simple. So if you can comb through your Google searches of what you're showing for and check off, does this make sense? Does this not make sense? You know, if you fine tune that over and over and over again. All of a sudden, you're just pumping your site with web traffic that is so dialed into what you want. It's they're they're looking for you. It's just you have to sit yourself at the top of Google search and have your hat in the ring to be able to get those phone calls. So without really breaking the bank, it's really easy for someone new to just set up a website, turn on Google Ads, and boom! Like I'm controlling the market now that has been popular for years. So classic example: I work with a bunch of guides in Montana. Unbelievably saturated market for guides, lodges, outfitters. There's lots of people advertising. And they spend a lot of money on advertisement, so it's really tough to cut right in there. So take a market like Bozeman. From Bozeman, you can fish Gallatin, Madison, Yellowstone, Missouri. You know, you you can get all over the place. So all these all these outfitters are all trying to grab trips in the same rivers. Granted, there's plenty of volume, and most can, you know, share that and get their fill. Um, but it's tough. So, like, you know, I, I just helped a new, a new outfitter in Bozeman build a new website. We're going to turn on ads. He's going to take a place like Bozeman that has been unbelievably saturated for decades. And all of a sudden he's going to be showing at the top of searches for those Bozeman fly fishing guide searches like that. You can instantly change that guy's business and also have a ripple effect into how other people are getting trips in the market, you know? So it's, it is, it's like the most overlooked piece of being an outfitter is like, where do my trips come from? And like, unless you are a fly shop where, you know, people see your store in town or you're on something like the, you know, South Holston and there's a draw, people are already going there or they're wanting to go there. You know, you have a little bit of an easier time, but if you're somewhere that it's not a big name river or you're fishing, you know, uh, you're, you're traveling to meet people and fish a bunch of different rivers. Um, if you're saltwater and you're offering offshore and inshore and near shore, you know, there's, there's lots of different pieces that go into that, but yeah, really easy for, for someone to come in and, you know, get set up with a, a marketing funnel system that just operates in the back end while they just continue to fish. I have some clients that are offshore fishermen. They're gone for four or five days at a time. You know, it's like they come home, their priority is not sitting down and looking at analytics and, you know, tweaking bids in Google ads and looking at reports. And it's just, they're not spending time with family. They're prepping their gear. They're retying flies or, you know, doing whatever. So it's, this has been a great fit. And it's, there's so much synergy with, with go guide and, you know, booking softwares in general, because like you said, in today's day and age, it almost is a requirement to some extent, you know, you're, Especially if you're a single guide, you're out with a client fishing all day long. You're not just going to pick up your phone all day long when Google ads are calling saying, you know, oh, excuse me, buddy. I'm just going to take this call and, you know, book another trip while I'm fishing with you. It's like, no, you don't. So if you don't take that call, you miss it. That person goes to the next outfitter, you're losing business. But if you have a booking software, at least that person has a chance to check availability or see your prices or, you know, reach out if they want to, leave a message. Um, Yeah, so it's really is uh, all this stuff is really 
it's such a big piece that people don't buy into right away. And some people don't even know that it's an option to run Google search ads. Um, but it seems like when they do reach out, whether they're a brand new guide service, whether they're someone who's just looking to fill some extra volume or they're, a, you know, that old dog in the neighborhood who's been around forever and just is losing ground and their clients are aging out and, you know, they just, they can't get those new, new leads coming in. They don't have an Instagram presence and don't want to post, you know, it's just, there's a lot of these clients out there that, you know, once it finally clicks that they understand they need to have this be a piece of it, uh, they really buy in and it's, it's a nice they see the value, they see the success, they can Google themselves and see themselves up there. They're getting calls of people say, hey, I just found you on Google. It's like, it feels great when you can just get trips without having to like actively climb and grab for every next trip, you know, which is, which is tough. So, well, that's, you know, that's a big part of the reason that we say nobody starts a business in the outdoors to run a business. Yeah. You start a business yeah. in the outdoors to be outdoors. And yeah. if you can fill your pipeline and you can focus on doing what you do best, like, that's how you create a better guide service is by not being stressed out about trying to find your next customer and focusing on the customer that's right in front of you. And it's funny that you say um, that you shouldn't be picking up the phone while you're out on the water with a client because as someone who has, in starting our business, cold called quite a few guides, yeah. um, you'd be surprised how many guides still pick up the phone while they're out on the water with a client. And yeah. I get it because if that's Not the only system that you have, you don't want to yeah. lose that customer. But also you have a customer in the boat with you that like yeah. should be getting your focus. So yeah. it's funny that you say that because it's something that when that happens on a cold call, it either goes one of two ways. It's either, hey, we want to help you so that you don't have to do this. Yeah. Or we say that and they're like, I don't need that. So there's yeah. like, you know, there's still some some people who aren't aren't necessarily ready for that change. Um and I don't know that it's, you know, it's, it's not something that I can say is fully a good thing, fully a bad thing, but I, this is the way the world is going. So you have to, you have to be a part of it. And the other thing that we always talk about with our clients is we, we consistently get the, um, the rebuttal when we're talking to a potential client of, I like to talk to all my clients. I like to be as personal as I, I can with each of them. And our response to that is great. Then do that with the ones who want to talk to you, but there is a growing subsection of your market who just wants to book you and they don't need to talk to you. So yeah. if you can capture that with the online booking piece, then you can spend more time talking to the ones who actually want to talk to you. So yeah. that's kind of our framework on it is like 80, 20, put 80% of your effort on the 20% that, you know, do want yeah. to talk to you. And, and I, I'm kind of, a, I'm maybe I'm old school with that too. But like, I, I still think like most people, even if you have a booking software on your site, people probably will reach out to the guide before they go through and book, you know, especially on some of these higher ticket, you know, floats and, and, and charter services and, you know, a lodge stay, someone's not just going to go on the, for the first time they hit a website and go on and book a, you know, a five night stay in Montana for thousands of yeah. dollars. You know, it's just so fine. So you have your phone number up in the header. You got a contact page with a form, but you have to have those options. You know, you get someone they can call, they can leave a form. I have some guys who have a, a live chat, you know, option on their page. Um, people are going to reach out how they want to reach out. But I think you figure where guides were as far as their technology capabilities to get a website set up and to run ads and have it. There weren't even booking softwares like this five years ago for guys. So I think. Yeah. In five years, I think it's almost going to be like people are just going to X right out of your site if there's not a booking software option on there. Because I think it, you know, mobile technology is going to advance. In 10 years, people will probably be booking trips through their contact lenses. You know, it's like you're just doing shopping and, you know, clicking twice with your eyelids to, to book a trip. Like, it's just who knows. But, you know, I just think it's, it is, a especially from phones. I mean, Google ads are great, but it is. It's that back, back half of the site. So even if somebody comes to the table, comes to go guide with a, you know, a, a Squarespace site that their sister built, you know, in, in one night and it's just a thrown together, you know, mishmash website. You can layer in a go guide software or, you know, a booking software on there and it, it gives that, that website, which otherwise, you know, doesn't have a great experience or a, a flow on it. All of a sudden they tap into the, you know, sort of book a trip or see availability. They're in this beautiful checkout process. You know, that works great on phones. They can easily go right through it, learn what they need to know about each trip, which guide they want to go with. So I think like it, it can take a site that would on its own not have a great conversion rate, even on just phone calls and outreach for forms, 
to one that at least has now three options for, for a conversion or some sort of lead outreach. And at least like, say you're on the phone that person calls and is like, Hey, like, I'm just wondering if you're, um, if your boat's, you know, handicap accessible or something. I work with a guy in, in California who claims he's got the first drift boat in California, handicap or wheelchair accessible. You know, there's a niche for everything. You never know, but someone's going to call you say, Hey, I do head right over to my site. You can book so-and-so, you know, try to write on there. Great. They go on there and, and have a nice smooth process that they, that they trust and, you know, seems credible and legit, regardless of how that website was set up, you know, by that guy himself without having to do website work on top of it. So yeah, it's yeah, it adds extra me. context. <laughs> yeah, it adds extra context, provides a little bit more information, gives a better experience, like feel of what that experience is actually going to be like. And that, you know, that was our goal when we started it was how can we create an online booking system that is as close as possible to calling and talking to someone on the phone, if not better. And that was our goal. Um, but going back to kind of what you, what you do, what are kind of, what's your bread and butter? What are the, the yep. different things that you do for guides and outfitters? Yeah. So basically I, in a nutshell, I act as the advertising branch of all of the clients I work with. So the goal, when I tell them, I'm like, I, my goal is to take these headaches off your plate. Yes. You know, there's a lot of communications back and forth that, that's involved. The idea is that like you trusted me that I'm doing this on the background and that you feel that your phone is ringing and you feel the impact of it on, on your end. So short answer, advertising agency for fishing guides. My bread and butter is for sure Google ads, Google search ads. And it's really, a, I'll say it again, like intent, intent, intent. You cannot beat the intent of someone going onto Google and typing in, you know, fishing guides in whatever location or fly fishing wherever or fishing charters in whatever, fishing near whatever. That intent of someone who's typing in, I'm looking for a paid trip. You can block out words like, you know, spots or access or, um, you know, where to, you know, all these words that don't make sense. But the goal is getting your website to rank the top of Google search ads for people who are searching for relevant phrases, things that make sense for you. Um, that's very tough to do in, on your own without ads in today's world. You've got other advertisers up top, things like Fishing Booker, Yelp, TripAdvisor, YouTube links can get pulled in. You got that map section. If you're not in there, that's a big chunk that shows up, especially on a phone. So you're going to be scrolls down the page, even on your best day on your website. So Google ads come in really handy. So what I normally do for guys comes in kind of a two-step process. And the first is just getting the right people to your website. And that's through Google search is always how we start. So getting you to position at the top, getting that person to your site. Hopefully that person reaches out on their first visit. Most just won't just classic user behavior. They have, they're price shopping. They're going to look at your pictures and, you know, check you out. And then they're going to talk to their buddies, see if they can go, when they can, they go all that kind of stuff. So it's great to get that first person there. If they reach out, fantastic. But if not, you need to have a safety net under your website that just keeps keeps you, everything you're doing, social media, if you're doing email, if you're doing running Google ads, you need to support all those people who have shown interest in your trip or in your service or whatever you're offering and have left. So just because they left doesn't mean that they don't want to book with you. It just means that their you know, three-year-old ran in the room when they were on their phone looking at your site or you know their dog's barking or whatever and they have to stop. So what you can do on the back half, the second piece of this is called remarketing and it's gone, done through Google display ads, all through, all through the same Google ads dashboard. And Google display ads let you stay in front of your recent website visitors for a year and a half, 540 days after someone hits your website, they will stay bucketed in this audience that you can then serve ads to, you know, specific messaging and imaging to all over the web. A great example I always show is weather.com or like the weather app, the weather channel app. So if someone's checking a, you know, a, a a trip out for the weekend, two weekends out, something like that. Then they're looking for weather, seeing what day's better to book on, you know, what, what day's gonna rain, whatever. You'll look on weather.com and you'll scroll through. You'll start to see all these Google display ad placements. So you'll see ads for businesses that you were just checking out. You'll see stuff that you were just on. Uh, and then you'll also see other ad placements, but that's, that's exactly how this works. So someone's just on your site, then they're on weather.com. Your ad placement showing your logo, your images, your business stuff, encouraging them to come back and actually take an action or a book or learn more. The nice part about this is that when someone hits your website, they stay in there for a year and a half. You don't have to advertise to them the whole time. You can control the frequency of how, how often your ads are being seen. Uh, but it's an unbelievable, it's like building a giant email list where you just don't have their email, but you have the ability to serve around the season, you know, seasonally change your messaging and promote whatever you want. So for my lodges, for example, you get to fall, winter time, you know, December, January, turn on ads for now booking spring 2024 or now booking, you know, summer dates or, if you're, you know, a fly fishing guy and you're coming up the, you know, dry fly season here, it's like, you know, now your ads can be dry fly pictures or pictures of a big hatch or, you know, a fish rising or, you know, dry fly fishing is hot. You know, you, you change the, the, the wording seasonally to support those people who just showed interest. 
Um, I have a lot of guys who will do that in like a 30 day window instead of that, you know, people will stay there for 540 days, but you know, you can target them for seven days or, you know, 10 days. I have some guys who are in thinking of one who's in Anna Maria Island in Florida. So like a purely, you know, tourist travel destination. Um, so people are only there for a short little window. So there's no point in showing that person ads for a year after they've, you know, they've shown interest in, in Anna Maria Island. But yeah. you, if you have enough traffic in, in that, you know, short time frame, just set it to seven days, 10 days, 30 days, just to stay in front of somebody when they're planning in advance. And you can do things where like, you only do it to people who are outside of, you know, Anna Maria Island. So they're, maybe I'm in New York and I'm planning to go down. So there's obviously some time frame between now and when I go. So that's just an unbelievable opportunity for small guides to, to look so much bigger than they are, so much more credible. So I, I hear all the time from yeah. guys who start doing this and they reach out and I'm like, oh my God, dude, like I just saw my, my ad on you know, Yahoo or in this email, because sometimes emails, like people send out last emails, they'll have ad placements in there. Uh, and then they'll start hearing from clients. It's like, I'm seeing you everywhere. Like you must be huge. And it's like, you know, it's, a, it's one guy, one operation, but he shows up everywhere now once you enter his world. You know, once you touch that website, you are now in. So that's why Google search ads become so important to just flood that system with the right people. So you turn on that top of the funnel system, you bring on all those people who are actively searching for your trips. If they convert and on that first visit, great. But if not, it's really about just getting people with the intent who are looking for your trip, whether it's now or in July or in October. They did show intent, they clicked, they got to your website. So you can use that whole audience throughout the year to just nurture people who are who are showing interest in your trips. Or, uh, you know, like I, I have some guides in, who are in an area where it's like, it's not so cut and dry what they do. I'm thinking of one in, in Charleston. He runs a, a two-man skiff for, you know, backcountry, the low country creeks, redfish fishing. And he does conventional fishing. It's not fly fishing, so he appeals to a, a bigger audience. But when someone in Charleston searches Charleston fishing charters or Charleston inshore fishing charters, they're still picturing, you know, a bay boat or they're going out with, you know, four people or they're, they're you know, near shore fishing or something. Not everyone pictures that, you know, a two-foot creek and you're, you're flipping jigs to a, a tailing redfish or something. You know, it's a little bit, it's a little bit different. So... He's in a spot where now you can, you know, use the ads, pre-qualify people coming through. When they got to his site, we noticed that everybody was just leaving. You know, they were, they were getting there. They were seeing his, you know, aluminum two-man skip. It wasn't what they pictured. They were leaving. So a couple of things. We helped, we helped them make a video. We just, you know, recommended how to make, what to put in it. Put a video on his homepage that clearly showed, you know, this is what I do. This is why it's different than these bay boats. But it's a really cool, intimate experience, you know, for one or two people to get back in here and be, you know, up close and personal with sight fishing for these redfish. It's just a you know, different experience, but it's the same kind of way. You use those Google ads to pre-qualify people coming in. And then on the back end, we started showing all those remarketing ads. So, you know, people are saying like, you know, they just searched Charleston Fishing Charter, but now they're seeing for, you know, seven, 10 days, these awesome pictures of people, you know, up close with these school pods of, of redfish right off their boat or in this cool little backcountry creek. And all of a sudden people are clicking back now from that ad and coming back and calling them now that they understand what he does and what they're getting into. So, it's a really powerful tool to help educate people on like why they should book with you. And it just helps you establish yourself as the go-to guy in the area. You have to figure if somebody searches, you know, Charleston fishing guides and they open up three or four different outfitter sites um, and they, then they leave those, most outfitters aren't running these Google ads. So you're going to be that one guide in that market now that they keep seeing all over the place. You can do the same thing on Facebook and Instagram. We don't offer it as much anymore. We do it for some of the you know, bigger clients with bigger budgets. Uh, but same thing, someone who just goes on your website, next time they're on Instagram, they start seeing your ad. And you can be a little more salesy with those ads, you know, more of like a, you know, call the book or you know, like a book online kind of thing. Because they, they were just there, they just showed interest, they're still warm. Um, so it's really like, at the end of the day, the clients who come through my system and, and work with me for the most part, uh, long term, end up getting this just this built out machine in the back end. Like we, we have these ads set up, we know what searches work, we're tracking everything all the way through. Um, so you're, you're constantly feeding your system seasonally with, with new people coming in the top and then you're educating them after they've left your site on why they should come back and book with you. Um, so a really well, simple two-step process there. That's something that is new to me of the concept of being able to use Google ads to qualify your leads and then retarget them in other yeah. places and even yeah. be able to do it on social media. And then the important piece of what you said is that you are being so intentional with the searches that you want to show up for that yeah. you know the people who hit your website are people who actually are qualified and yep. interested in that type of a trip. So then when you retarget them, you have a higher likelihood. You know that audience, um, of your, you know that retargeting audience is qualified. 
um, right off the bat. It's really you know, cool getting there. that you can do it on other pages and you can do it on, on social media. Yeah. And it's the concept of building an email list without the emails is super interesting to me. I yeah. haven't heard anyone phrase it like that before. <laughs> um, what are some things I'm curious that you've found with like landing pages and what you drive people to that can help with conversions for guides and outfitters if you do run ads to be able to increase the um, the conversions that you get yeah, from that. that. That's a great question. And really it is like, when I have an upfront intro call with somebody, I'm, I usually screen share it, I'll pull up their website and we'll talk about this stuff right on the call because it really is, Google Ads is just half of this. If anything, it's less than half because you can push qualified people there all day long if your site just bad first impression, grainy images, or don't have a phone number visible, or, you know, one thing I see all the time that's a, real, a kiss of death, people will build a website and they think that having more pages is just better. And they'll take like, you know, an about section or their trip section and have, they'll, maybe they offer way trips and float trips and, you know, uh, an Alpine late trip or something. They'll have, you know, three different pages. And like, you know, it just takes longer for someone to click around on a phone. You're gonna lose somebody because, you know, page takes too long to load. It's tough. So what I like on a, a true landing page, a lot of people don't really like, you know, understand this concept of a landing page. Even if you have a website, you can create one page that you built up specifically just to funnel new traffic through. So it's traffic who they don't know you yet when they get there. It's so nice to have on one phone, especially on a, on a phone, um, to have one page where they can go through and get everything, everything they need to know about, you know, am I in the right spot or not? It's like just a couple of easy things. Like when someone lands there, a really quick, clear call out of where you are, where your base, where you're located. Somebody's just searched Charleston, that that title better say Charleston Fishing Guides or like something that you know you're in the right spot when you get there. Big, clear phone number I think is, is, is great. You got to kind of dumb it down and, and, you know, shove people down the path you want them to take. Um, I think people go back and forth about showing pricing on there. I think it's great to show pricing. I think it helps to kind of pre-qualify who's coming through. You don't get people getting that first question, calling you all the time saying, what are your prices? Like you just, you know, show them on there and have me to reach out for you know other questions or you know dates or whatever um, and the last thing that i really love video and it can be it doesn't need to be like polished professional fishing video i'm talking you know the guide sits on the on his boat or at the marina or you know it could even be something like this blank background selfie style hold their phone up in front of them position it up do a 30 60 second video just you know hey i'm captain so and so on base over here i run inshore near shore trips we're coming up on tarpon season. Things are looking great. Get your date in the books for, you know, June, July. Simple. You can rotate those seasonally. So, you know, summertime comes around, you're not doing tarpon anymore, change it up. Or, you know, fall season's coming around, make a fall video, throw it on your homepage. Yep. It's just, especially from a phone, someone lands there for the first time, rather than making them click through four, five, six pages, you watch a 30-second video, they get to see the guy, they hear your voice, they see the, the water, the boat. It just, you know, it's an easy, easy sales tool to just pre-qualify again who's going to be actually reaching out to you. Um, so it's I, so I much more personal. To everyone, it is. So that's it. Kind of helps bridge that gap, especially if you're using a booking software of cutting out the need for that call. If they just feel like, hey, like I feel this guy's vibe, like you know, I could spend the day in the boat with him. I think that's kind of what that call does for most people, anyway. Is like, who is this guy? Is this somebody I want to spend eight hours with in a in a drift boat? You know, so. Yeah. It's, I think that kind of helps bridge that gap. And that person within 30 seconds of being on your site knows, am I in the right place or am I not? And that's just, yeah, it's just an easy, easy tool. It's a, the, the lowest barrier. Everyone's got a phone, record it, upload it to your site and, and you're done. You don't have to edit it. Don't put a flashy logo in the beginning, you know, keep it raw and just, just use I that. Think you, know, that you can use that for ads on social or post it on Instagram, put it up on YouTube. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a great tool. I think video is one of the most underused tool and I get it. Like it's scary, right? Like it's, it's a little bit scarier to record a video and put that out there than it is to like write something, but it's so much more personal. That's why I even, you know, I send video emails. Right? Cause yep. I, and I think I've been doing that a ton of it. Yeah. It's great. It's, it's awesome. And people, they are very receptive to it. Like they, they can tell mm -hmm. that it was personalized to you. And when you put that on a landing page, um, it it does give more context to the person who's who's booking and one yeah. thing that i see a lot and i'd be curious your take on this with websites and with landing pages and i think it was an interesting point that you should maybe have even if you're running advertisements and you have a great website you should probably create a landing page that's specific to the advertisement you were running because yep. you're not people who come from that advertisement they don't want to hear your life story like they want to they want to get what they were looking for yep. out of it um, but one thing I see even just with websites all the time in like the guiding space is way too many words 
like way too much. Yeah. Uh, no one, no one cares about your life story. They, you know, they care about getting their problem solved. And if you can frame yourself as someone who is credible in solving that problem, yeah. like, and is going to be able to provide you with an awesome experience, like that's all they need to know. Especially yeah. if you have a video in there where you can show that, like yeah. you're good. You less is more in websites. Yeah. So many guide services have huge paragraphs about like the massive history of their company and stuff. And like, that's great. But also you can establish that credibility by saying 40 years in business or 300 trips taken last year, or, you know, here's my customer testimonials right yeah. away. Like you can establish credibility yeah. without a massive paragraph. And yeah. so many guide services have these massive paragraphs on their website that no one reads. Yeah. And I think like a lot of that probably comes from people thinking that, you know, more text, you get better chance of, being found in SEO and getting rankings and all that. But again, like if there's no intention behind what content you're putting on there, if you're not putting it in the right places, it does nothing. And in the most cases, I have, I have guys who ask me about SEO all the time and it is, SEO is very different than what I do. SEO is the long-term ongoing grind. Certainly important, certainly has it has its place, but it's, you know, you do it all this year to hopefully you feel the results, you know, two, three, four years out, you know, of, of, you know, it's next, it's next season's, you know, improvement. So. Google ads, the nice part is you can turn these on and, and activate it. And, you know, as soon as we press live, someone makes that search, boom, there you are. Like you can turn it on and it, it can work the same day, you know? So it's, they are, they're, they're both important, but they're both very different. But I think a lot of clients, a lot of guys miss the boat by trying to stuff their, their pages with content when that content won't help them surface. You know, it's like, you just won't, unless you're really, you're blogging actively or you have a bunch of content about like, you know, if you're in Bozeman, it, you need like, you know, best places to eat in Bozeman, places to stay in Bozeman, like things to do on, a, on your fishing trip in Bozeman, like, you know, all that kind of stuff over and over and over again. And that's a, that's a full-time job in its own. You know, it's another thing that guides don't have time to do. So rather than just stuffing keywords in, you know, or, you know, stuffing extra text in that when someone gets on a phone and they go to, you know, take a scroll or two and all they see is just black and white and text and text and text. It's like, all you need is where are you? What kind of trips do you offer? What are your rates? How do I book? And like, Great. And strat, establish a little bit of credibility. Like yeah. I love a little bit of reviews. There. Yep. Great. Google reviews are so big. Pull those in. Like let other clients mm -hmm. speak for for you. You know, it's like no one needs to read your you know four paragraph about page of of, of how yeah. you, you know, fell in love with fishing. You know, for the most part. On the on the testimonial side, one thing that I think more guides and outfitters should do, and I've seen a couple guides and outfitters do this really successful, but not a lot, is after you have a great day of fishing with a client, yeah. ask them if they will take 30 seconds and do a video testimonial. Yeah. Like because that, yeah. a lot of these guides are, they hate posting on social media. They hate coming up with things to post. If you just ask your client that you just provided an awesome trip to yeah. for a video testimonial where you can have them say, this is my name. This is, you know, my skill level. This is, you know, where I'm from. Like, add some context to who they are because people relate to people who are yeah. like them. And then provide the testimonial of how they just had a great day. Yeah. That is going to do wonders for you on your social media it's as huge. well as you just collected your testimonial, which most of these guys, like, they forget to collect testimonials. Yeah. So that's kind of like a sidebar, but it's something that I've been pushing for our guides to do is establish that credibility and be able to like get consistent social media posts. Cause like, even as you talk about SEO, all of our guides talk about SEO and realistically, you just have to be consistent. You just have to show Google that you're active. And part of that is posting online. Part of that's doing blog posts, like provide value to people and establish your credibility and you're going to be fine. Um, what is, so let's say I am, I have a, a question that I want to ask that I wasn't planning on asking, but okay. was interesting from one of the other ones that you, you said, how do you approach the strategy that you use differently from like a general marketing perspective for a company that's in a touristy area versus a company that's not? Because you said you had a guy who was in, um, you know, a place where they, people are only there for like seven days. Yeah. What would be your kind of overarching difference in sure. strategy that either you would use or you would recommend? Yeah. To well, there's a couple of, a couple of examples I'm thinking of. Um, so for one, like I got a guide in Isla Mirada, Florida. Okay. I think you know who I'm talking about. Uh, yep. 
and he's in a spot that like you're not just you're not just hanging around there. You're in the area, you know, and, and you're looking for something to do. Like you, you, you take some effort to go down there. Like you, you're there to visit the keys to, to fish, you know. So someone who's down there doing that, their search habits are going to be much different. So that person is going to pretty much always use Isla Mirada in a search. You know, Isla Mirada fishing charters, fishing guides, tarpon fishing, backcountry fishing, something with tarpon as a location identifier in there. So that guy, the way I approach it, and this is pretty much across the board for, for most for most clients, uh, you're going to have one campaign that's you know broad. So it's, it's like everyone in the U.S. Anyone in the U.S. who is searching Isla Mirada fishing charters, you can show that ad to. And then you have another one, another campaign where it's a local radius, or you say maybe you take all the Keys or all of Florida, and you have that. I wouldn't do all of Florida for that one, but a radius around the Keys because there's going to be people who would just search like fishing charters near me or fly fishing guide near me, and they don't use that Isla Mirada phrase in there. But it doesn't make sense to use that phrase as someone who's in Atlanta, Georgia, searching, you know, fishing near me when you're trying to run ads for Isla Mirada. So you see how like the intent ends up becoming like critically important in both of those campaigns because you start showing on the wrong things, your budget gets eaten up and you're done. And that's when people come to me and they're like, I just ran Google ads for a month, didn't get anything from it. I don't think it works for me. I, I don't think, you know, your service works. And it's like, well, okay, well, did you have tracking? What were your search terms? And like people are like, what are search terms? And it's like... Okay, so you weren't looking at you know anything that really matters as far as getting in front of the right the right people. So the flip side of that, like that that situation is pretty easy because someone's really had to be there's only gonna be a handful of ways someone's gonna search for that trip. On the flip side, I can think of someone I work with and they're in like central Pennsylvania and like sure they've got like you know state college and there's some really great you know limestone and freestone streams around there. But there's really not one like there's not one big draw. He lives out of that area, so he's traveling. And meeting people around in different locations and he's you know people are staying over here but they got to come you know two hours to meet him over here to fish and it's just like a people aren't always staying right in town where they're fishing you know it's, it's just like a different dynamic of how someone's getting to him so he he's got no like location pull you know like he's pulling a little bit yeah. from, from pittsburgh a little bit from philly but like those are the big big metros on either end of the state and he's everywhere in the middle you know so he's he's in a unique position where it's like okay, yeah, we do some of like the fishing near me, trout fishing near me, like Pennsylvania fly fishing guides, but he's got to go so much broader, like cast that big wide web and like figure out now, like, okay, now that we see all these searches coming through, which searches of these turn into clicks, which are turning into phone calls. And like, it's, it's a reverse engineering process of figuring out how are people looking for his trips or, you know, how can we find pockets of people who would, would go fish with this guy, you know, cause he's not, they're not just looking for one river and he's crushing that area all over and over again, or like just doing Pittsburgh, you know? So it's, He's in a spot where he doesn't have that destination draw like, you know, Bozeman or like San Diego or Redding, California, you know, some of those other places that just like, you know, people are traveling there for a multi-day fishing trip and like they're playing that, playing that out where he, you know, there's places like that, that, that benefit, that, that, you know, benefit from those kind of locations differently. Um, so you do, you have to approach it different, but as soon as you, you set up that initial, like, okay, are these people thinking like, are they visiting from out of state? Are they going to be looking for locations or rivers? Once you set up that system, it just comes down to search terms. So I keep saying search terms and Google ads gives you a list of phrases that your ads are showing for. So as you start targeting keywords, you get to see the real phrases that people are actually typing in to trigger your ads and start the whole process. So that's like, that's the, the quality check of this whole strategy. So if you look through there, there's really no cheating and being like, well, you got 500 clicks. I think it worked for you. It's like, well, they weren't, they weren't relevant clicks. And it's like, well, okay, we can walk through these and say like, these people are literally typing in line by line, like, Fly fishing guides and and you know wherever fishing guides and whatever they're they're spot on to the trips that you're trying to run. So like that's where you know that that side of the system works so well. Pure intent, pure low bottom of the funnel coming in. Most of my guides come to me at like I said like I'm the first entry point into marketing and advertising for for most of them. So they come to me and like they're not like hey I'm ready to just pump money into this thing and and, and crush it. It's like they're like uh like I don't know if I can afford this I don't know if I can do it I don't know if it'll work for me they start with the bare minimum and then like you're already kind of pinching the Google system as far as how much they can give you in a day or how often you'll show for in a day so it's it's a hard grind like those first few months are really hard to prove that this works and get them to spend more and it seems to be that tipping point of you know they get to the point where it's like okay I'm buying into this I, I'm getting some calls I want to get more it, they they bump their daily budget up to a point where Google feels like I can show you more often in that in that top position because it's an auction system, you know. So like every time someone searches, you're bidding against other advertisers to get that position at the top. And Google knows how much these things are worth. Like, I, for example, I used to run some ads for like a lawyer at my last agency. You can't get a click on Google Ads for a lawyer phrase for like under twelve, fifteen dollars. Like that's just yeah. you know the value of what that turns into. So even if you're in a market where no one else is advertising, you're the only ad showing up. You're not going to get you know penny clicks or five cent clicks, ten cent clicks. Like you're not going to get 
10 leads in a day on a $10 budget. Google just knows that they will throttle you. Like they will not let you get that much in there. So there is a little bit of reverse engineering and math and looking at the data and knowing that, okay, Google's, you know, on, on, you know most of my guys start around 300 a month, which is really low. Like that's, that's kind of riding the, the bare minimum because that you break down about 30 days in a month. It gives you about $10 a day. Figure the average click is anywhere in the, the dollar range for the most part. It's a numbers game. So, you know, getting 10 clicks on average in a day, like is your site converting at a high enough level to move the needle with that? Like are you are one, two, three people reaching out in a day or is there work to do? Like are you not showing for the right things and people are clicking, giving your site, they're not there for the right thing or they're turned off or whatever and they leave. Like it's just fine tuning all of that data um, to, to get this whole thing to work. So I, I know I danced around your question. I don't even know if I answered it yet, but. Um, yeah, yeah, I think so. Like <laughs> to, to kind of summarize on it, if you, the way that you approach running Google ads for a touristy location versus a not as like touristy destination place yeah. is if it's a touristy destination, you start smaller and you focus really in on that. You can stay so tight. That spot. Yeah. Yeah. You really don't. And then for a large or for a non touristy destination, you go really broad and then you figure out what's working and you Almost hone in right. on the keywords that are working. Yep. That and it can come accurate. down like, you know, that guy he, in Pennsylvania there, like he's doing some trout and then, you know, the waters warm up, they get low, he switches over, over to bass, he does some musky stuff. So it's like, you know, there's a lot of moving pieces there compared to just an inshore fisherman in Isla Mirada who's just every day wakes up, does the same trip with a different group, same trip with a different group, you know, over and over. It's like, he's got a very repeatable business. So like I said, like, you're only going to search for a, a trip in Isla Mirada a handful of ways. So we figure those out, you know, you get it dialed in with tracking, you figure out what ad copy works well, dial in his landing page. And now it's like, you know, just throttle that thing up. You know, it's like all the his his puzzles in place. It's just he knife now he funnels it with with a little extra cash to make sure he stays at the top. And people are searching those terms that he knows convert into leads for yep. him. And you know that it's an easy system to dial up once you like accept it as part of your business. Of like, you know, this is a huge piece of how I'm going to get new business. I'm going to pay that cost and know that like yeah, it sucks to spend a thousand dollars a month or something on you know someone to manage my ads and my ad spend. But you get that back, and if you don't, you're spending money on the wrong things, and that and that would be my my fault, you know. And like, my business works month to month. I do no contracts. I don't lock anybody in. So it is just purely results driven. Like I I do that for the most part for seasonality. A lot of guys just don't make sense to have a contract and lock them in when they're not taking trips or they're not their busy season. People want to stop and conserve budget. That's fine. But um, you know, I do that on a month to month basis because you can get this to work and it works really, really great when you do it, you know, and it, especially when you team it up with something like, like a go guy system on the back end, Cause it's just, it completes the full circle that people are looking for an online buying experience of how to, how to look for and book a, a charter. The other piece that's important for guide services to understand when you're considering, you know, spending money on new lead generation is that this industry has a very high reoccurring customer base like if you do a really good job on your trip you might get that customer for the next 10 years so yeah. you know you, you will make your money back with what you do on you know if you bring in enough new leads on the first yeah. go around but you're also going to have that client for a really long time yeah like that's a huge piece of it um that's important to understand that you know it's worth the investment and i think what you do of doing the month to month where you you say look let me give it a shot and if i'm wrong don't use me yeah. like make it really that's a, that's a pretty pretty good pitch because you're confident in what you do and you've proved it for a lot of people yeah. um, you know that's the the credibility side of it what would you recommend if i am an independent guide or i'm a small guide service i'm just starting um, what would you recommend from like big picture perspective or if you just want to get started as a guide yeah what would you do to get to the point where three years from now you know you have a full schedule yeah so a couple things obviously i'd google ads and i'd recommend you know a service like mine but before you even get there um some of those things you mentioned about websites like how to optimize that landing page getting a video on there and then outside of your website Google business profile and people overlook that. It's something that most guys don't even know about, but it's, if you were to search, you know, Bozeman fly fishing guides, it's that map portion that comes up. It'll list local businesses. It's what shows your, your reviews in there, your phone number, your address, all your, you know, your business info. Um, and that, that's where you're going to get all your, your Google reviews from. And that inside there, it gives you a nice short link that you can send people after, you know, a trip or text them, you know, after the trip, Hey, can you leave a quick review? 
all done right through Google Business Profile. It's super easy to set up, free to set up. There's no extra payments in there. It's just you have to have your business simple filled out to get any of that map love. Um, and you'll see like in a certain market, if you open up that map, it'll show you where the, the charters and where the fishing guides are on a map. Um, and if you don't have that, it's just, you know, big ding from Google, big red flag that, you know, you don't have a credible, legit business set up. So um, it can hurt SEO value, but it also is just, I think, a credibility thing. If someone's looking for you to be able to see quickly your reviews, your phone number, where your, you know, your docked or your address, where your fly shop is, um, that's the first thing. So set up Google business profile. Um, and then um, really, I think right away you can start Google ads. I mean, I think it's, it's just that piece. It's like, okay, now I got a website. You know, like I've got my business profile. I can get reviews. I'm like, I'm set up on the baseline, like the free level. Um, and now it's like, okay, like I could just sit here and like wait for things to hopefully pick up or keep posting and, you know, doing whatever. But the proactive way of getting in front of those new people is turning on Google ads right away. So like I said, most people who come to me are, I'm their first touch point into marketing. So they'll start really skittish. They'll start at the bare minimum uh, investment. There's nothing wrong with that. I have plenty of clients that I've had for four years now that still haven't gotten above 300 a month in their ad spend, you know, and they don't really need to in their market. Um, so sure, like you could spend more and stay number one more often all the time, but depending on what your goals are as an advertiser and your your budget initially getting started. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've had clients just go as low as like 200 in a month. You really don't want to go much below that because it just goes so slow. Like you get data slow, yeah. you get results slow. And it, it's the same thing, it's intent, you're chasing intent. So if you can get that intent, it's worth it to spend more because every person that clicks should be a qualified customer for you. Um, so really those are the, you could do that simple process right there. And I would add in remarketing, that Google display remarketing strategy, staying in front of your website visitors. That's if you're spending 300 a month on Google ads, you could spend 20 a month on your Google display remarketing and stay in front of everyone all month long, because you're not going to have a site with tens of thousands of people getting to it. It's not going to cost much to stay in front of the people who do get to your site. I have most clients are like, they have like a hundred people in that website, in that, in that audience, in a 30 day window, you know, it's like, it's pretty much just the Google ads traffic they're paying for. Um, so yeah, with a really small audience, really small one-time guide, you can start to grow that client list. And that's really how I pitch it. It's like you run these ads to build your client base ongoing yeah. and like not to get off topic here, but one of my clients in, in Montana on the upper Madison river, he had just moved to Montana and was starting up his guide service. He had zero days on his calendar, started running Google ads for, I think it was the 20, 2019 season. It was the year before the Madison had all the regulation changes where people had to have log days on the river. And that's all the days that you would get for years going forward. So like he had to come in and absolutely smoke it that year to be able to carry those days, those guiding days into the next few years here. So we ran Google ads. I think he ended up doing close to 200 trip days that year. So I think he, I think he was in like 190 ballpark and like he had other operators in that area that were struggling to get their days locked in. And they're like, you know, damn dude, like, how are you doing this? It was as simple as Google ads. Like it was as simple as showing Madison River fly fishing guides, Ennis, Montana fly fishing guides, a little bit of Bozeman, but really Madison and Ennis have their own drop. You know, it's like, that was pretty easy yeah. to do. So he was able in one year to literally build his client base. Like those clients continued to book. Like he has a lot of people who just booked the next year, you know, after they do a trip with him. So that first year running Google ads, he literally was able to build a business. Now he, he pushes trips off to other guides. You know, he's, He's an established outfitter and I kind of joke and say that people like graduate out of my program, but he kind of did like, he's not hurting for yeah. value now. He's not hurting for leads all the time. He just likes to have people call him still and like still have a position at the top of Google, but he's not going nuts. You know, he's not going crazy, but he literally used that to build his business. And now like, here he is like, he doesn't need me anymore, but we've got a good relationship gone to my Montana. And fishing, <laughs> you know, it's a, it just really is like awesome to just see the power that really can come from a new guy going to a new market with a new website, no client base and like, boom, you know, it's like, you can just grow this really quickly. It does take some investment dollars and some like trust in the process, but you just let the data and the tracking do it. And if it doesn't work, you know, split ways. Like you just stop doing it, stop doing it or find something else. You know, it's just, if people get over that like 30, 60 day hump in the beginning of like, eh, like, I don't know if it's working. I'm not getting a ton yet. We're still figuring it out. If they get past that, they're usually in. Like I have most of my clients now are year round or they come back every year for their season. Like I have some now that I've been doing this for almost five years that have been there since the beginning every year. Like some just run year round because it just, it works. You know, to think about it, it's like a, you know, a profitable investment for the bottom line at the end of the year. You know, it's just, it makes a lot of sense. So yeah. that's incredible that you were able to take him from zero trips to 200 yeah. trips just with Google ads yeah. in a year. That's actually 
insane. That's like every guy's dream. Yeah. Is to yep. Go he was worried. I mean, yeah, the regulations calendar. were coming up. He was thinking about moving. Like he thought he would have to move and you know find somewhere else to guide. Like just a, uh, it's crazy. So yeah, it's uh just shows the power of it and being able to sit on top of a market that's so established already. Like you know, Madison, yeah. Ennis, Bozeman. Like those are some of the most popular fishing areas in Montana. You know, like, there's crazy volume yeah. there. So he he fought through established fly shops and people who've been there for 20 years and was able to f literally fulfill a client list, you know, with, with, with trips that come back year after year. I also think like it's oftentimes people overcomplicate um, whether or not, actually, let me rephrase that. People overcomplicate, in my opinion, like how far along they have to be before they feel like worthy yep. of being able to have a full calendar. You just have to have a perceived credibility. Yep. And that perceived credibility can come from taking five of your buddies out fishing and getting them to film five video testimonials yep. for you. Have you sit down, tell people about your business and show some B-roll of you catching a ton of fish yep. or That's it. whatever it is that you do. And now you have a landing page with five video testimonials and five different reviews yep. and a, a good video that shows kind of who you are and what you do. And you have perceived credibility. Like yep. you don't have to have You're been around for 20 years. Yeah. You just have to show that, you know, you have this element of credibility to you that will allow you to scale and grow. Yep. Um, so you just said how you were able to take this guy from zero to 200 trips in one year what's your strategy <laughs> what's the yeah. what's the what's the secret sauce that allows you to do what you do with with google ads or like what are you looking for to be able to make that yeah. happen if yeah. i'm if i'm a guide and i want to be able to do it what do i do other than call you yeah so i mean if you want to do it on your own or if you want to like yeah, yeah. So if you want to do it on your own it really comes down to it, it is those search terms are the biggest thing like ad copy is is important your landing page is important but those are the quickest ones that you can get data around to dial in. So your ad copy, like, you know, you can you can pretty much Google for the most part. So like for that one example, like, you know, Google Bozeman Fly Fishing Guides or Bozeman, you know, Madison River Fly Fishing Guides, like see what other ads come up, see who else, what are the organic listings? Like what sites show up on their own at the top? What do those say? Um, and you can kind of, you know, you want yours to stand out. You don't want to just write what everyone else writes, but a lot of people, when I see Google ads, for the most part, even when I like auditing an account or someone comes to me and they've been running them already, it seems like they're just written to please Google and like the algorithm, you know, like they're not, they're not written for people, which I think is the biggest downfall. And I see a lot of ads, like the standard practice for ads is to capitalize every letter of your ad, like even the sentences. And when I look at that, like when I'm reading that as a normal human, human being, it looks funny. You know, it's like, it's just, I don't, I don't like that. Like, I, don't, I don't get down with that. So like, I don't, I don't do that on any of my ads, you know, and it's like, it's a little bit different than some of the other ads in there. Um, I've found some like, you know, winning headlines and stuff for certain areas that, that work just from running, you know, a hundred plus of these accounts across the country. Um, but yeah, really it comes down to just knowing who you need to get in front of with that intent and then making sure that those search terms that you are showing for are good. So like for him out in Montana there, like it was mass river fly fishing you know, plus, you know, obviously with like guide trip flow, like any of those words on top of there showing intent, like that's all we showed for. And like, I was very like very clean with that. Like, you know, like we didn't even really tap into Bozeman because I wanted to just keep it Madison focused for him. Um, so yeah, I mean that intent, I get, I keep saying that, but like if you were to do this on your own, like it's all about who is making those searches and coming through. Like what is their mindset when they make that search? Like you don't want to show for fly fishing Montana or like best flies for the upper Madison or like Madison river access spots or CFS, like flow data, you know, like there's a lot of searches going on around the Madison that you don't want to show for, or that like you could easily reports are a big one that I block out. So like you don't want to show for the words report or reports unless you are actively, actively putting up a report that like gets traffic a lot. A lot of times people yeah. who are looking for reports are going to go fish on their own, or they're just a fisherman in general in the area and they're, they're not going to hire a guide. Um, so that was a big one for him blocking out all those like random words. So he really just showed for what made sense. Like you could do that. Like I don't really work with people less than, you know, 300 a month on, their ad spend just so it moves the needle and I know I can make it work for them. Like on top of their, their cost paying me, you know, to make it profitable, but someone doing it by themselves, like could spend 50 bucks, like a hundred bucks on, on an ad, you know, themselves, you can set it at a dollar a day. Like you could literally just set it and let it run and see what starts to come in and start small and, and go from there. But the biggest, biggest, biggest thing on top of all that I just said is tracking. 
And that's the hard part for people to do on their own, which like I, I can understand like that part might help to outsource or get someone to help you. There are YouTube videos that help walk you through it. But without tracking, you will never know what's successful. You might find success with it, but you won't be able to track back and say like what 10 or 20% of my account is working. And that's really usually all it is. Like you're going to fine tune that like a lot of it is crap or like doesn't, isn't worth it. You're not getting the best cost per lead or it's, you know, they're unprofitable leads. Like there could be good ones coming through, but it's not as good as some of the other ones. So it's always trying to get that cost per lead down. And you can't do that unless you're tracking for, you know, who's clicking your, your, your phone number, your email address, or who's booking or sending a contact form. And that way, month over month, when you're looking at this stuff, you get to know that like it really ends up being like a really three, four, five phrases that are going to contribute to 90% of your actual leads coming through. So like when people ask me like, can you just set me up an ad and I'll manage it? Or, um, you know, can you just do it for a month and I'll take it over? Or, you know, I just really, I don't like for a couple of reasons. For one, like when I've done that, it ends up, they just come back and ask me questions anyway about what to do when they're in there. Um, or it just doesn't work and they, they, they waste money because they don't make the right change. Like just because I set it up for you doesn't mean I set it up right. It just means that I set it up to give us the best chance out of the gate to use data to then optimize this thing. And if you're not doing yeah. that monthly, which is why I charge monthly, like I don't just set up a setup fee and then you're done. You know, it's like I'm in there monthly making sure this stuff works and like the traffic you're going to get in Montana from now till, you know, July, April is going to be a lot different than what you get from October to February. So like things change seasonally and like there's a lot, a lot of small things going on in there. So the people who do this on their own and like there's, there's only one client that I work with consistently who I just audit quarterly and like he manages it. But he actually puts in the time and like does it himself. Like I don't have anything wrong with that. Like I have nothing against that. Like do it yourself, you know. And like I do. I have a lot of clients that like are or potential clients I'll get on and talk to, and I'll screen share and like show them some of my stuff. Like I don't show them how to do it, but like I'm not trying to stop anybody from doing it. Like I'm not. Yeah. I don't think I'm going to have every client in the world working with me. You know, it's like I I'm I'm not fancy about that, but like it, it is a very very easy place to spend money on the wrong stuff. Like I, yeah. the clients who come to me that have run it before come to me saying it doesn't work or that they don't think it'll work for them. And like, there's really, there's no, uh, it's hard to think of any business in any industry that Google search ads do not work with, or, or that you doesn't make sense for you to stay in front of someone who just showed interest in your business with a remarketing ad. So it's really hard. Like I always fight back and I'm always like, let me get in your account. Like, let me just show you. It's like, okay, you, you weren't tracking anything. Like you don't know what was working or what was not. Um, so yeah, that's my biggest recommendation. Start small, got to have tracking so you know what's working and search terms like and they're very easy to see in there you know the search term quality so that's your that's your gut check every month of your campaign you know health is are you showing for the right people are they turning into leads and if not like why not i've seen a lot where you're running a great account you have tracking set up and you're not getting any any conversions that makes me think website right like if you have great search terms people are searching for exactly what you offer and they get to your site and they're leaving in five ten seconds and you can track that sort of thing they're only viewing one page on their visit and they're leaving in 10 seconds that's not enough you know, to, to get anything out of your site in 10 seconds. So what's wrong with that keyword? What's wrong with the ad copy? What, what's the discrepancy between what they expected and what they got when they got there? You know, so there's a lot of little things like that that can just cripple a good campaign. That's why the website's yeah. so important. The visuals are so important. It really is. A, it's, a, it's a tag team. So there's a lot of moving pieces to this, which is why I do recommend people will reach out to me to, to have you do it. But yeah. you can certainly do this on your own. It's just it is, it's easy to do wrong if you just launch it and set it and hope that you know, you're going to get calls because that's just not how it that's not how it works. I think that marketing in general is one of the hardest things to find someone who's really good at it. Like yeah. you can really waste yeah. money on marketing. And yeah. from what you said, it sounds like the key to your strategy for being able to find new leads for a guide service or for an outfitter is being able to narrow in the focus of your campaigns and then being able to track it so that you can narrow the focus even more yep. and make sure that you're matching up the right keywords to the right landing pages. Um, and if you're not tracking yep. that and you're not adjusting it, you're not going to be able to apply that 80, 20 rule of picking the 20% yep. of what you're doing and spending your money on. That's giving you 80% of your return. Yep. And most people, if they're not doing, you know, they're not, they haven't done this for a really long time are probably, yep wasting money on that 80% that's bringing them 20% of their results versus the other yep. way around. Yeah, very definitely. Cool. Okay. Um, I guess kind of the last, last thing I'll leave you with is how competitive do you think 
Google ads is within the guiding industry? Like, is it something that's getting more competitive? Is it something that is um, less competitive? Like, what is your yeah, overall there's take huge, on? there's huge variation depending on the market. Obviously, like some areas are fly fishing hubs, some are saltwater hubs. Like there's you know, some places have draw, some places don't. So like there's there's variants like crazy. Like, you know, most people I talk to on the first call are like, you know, for that 300, 400 bucks, like what can I expect every month? And it's like, it's so hard. Like I, I never guarantee anything. It's so difficult. Um, I, tr I try to recommend like the, the, the cost per lead ballpark that I aim for. Um, but usually don't get to that benchmark until after like 90 days of data to where, you know, like this is, this is the benchmark I can trust. And like, this is what I can work off of. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah, I guess, uh, shit. depends on the area. It, it totally depends on the area. It's definitely, it's getting more competitive. I guess what's nice, there's something called auction insights inside Google ads that it takes like 30, 60, 90 days for that to start building up, but you'll get some data as far as who else you're competing against. And it's not, they won't give you everybody, but you can see like, you know, how much are we overlapping? Like how often am I number one compared to them? So that's something like when I get on calls with people, they're always curious to see who else is in the market who's doing it either ads or like, who am I competing with? You know? So like, I, I love showing people that. I think it's kind of a cool, creepy hack to be able to get that stuff. Um, but, um, but yeah, it, it is, it's getting more and more competitive. But what I, I think there's more and more people who are doing it bad. You know, like I, when I see yeah. other ads on there, a lot of times it's just like, it's the business name and like, and like, a you know, another, just like a, the headlines of them just make no sense. Again, I think they're, they're like written to please the keywords you're targeting or to please SEO and like they don't think about like there's a person reading this like and they're reading multiple headlines like what's going to grab them what stands out like what are they looking for like that person in Bozeman like now it's dry fly time so like your ad should say is talk about dry flies or like the hatch is going on like you shouldn't be, you shouldn't still say like oh streamer season or like we're nymphing them up deep in the cold water you know like you, you, you gotta change all that stuff you know so it's it is it's it's competitive and I think people who do it do it poorly and I've seen some campaigns where like you can see that they're putting a lot of money into it and they're, they're not doing a good job. You know, it's like, yeah. I like seeing that stuff, but yeah, I think it is competitive just because again, now like anybody can do it. Like you could just build your website, go on YouTube, watch a tutorial on how to launch a Google ads campaign, go and do it. They, they actually, when people, when I take over accounts, they have more, almost always the, the account has a set up what's called a smart campaign. And that's Google's like, first step into Google ads. Like when you go to launch a new Google ads campaign or a new account, if you go to start a new account, they automatically dump you right into a smart campaign, which all you do is you put in a few keywords, you, you write one ad, um, you put a little bit of targeting in and then Google like runs with it. You know, like there's no, there's no quality control on those keywords. Like they take, like you could put, you know, fly fishing Montana and they would show you for like, you know, Wyoming fishing rivers, right? You know, just random stuff. They, they, they take it and they, they extrapolate it. They just cast a wide net and try to get you some search results. And people think that's Google ads, you know, and like that's as far as into the system as they get. And there's one little drop down up top that drops down and says switch to expert mode. And it like, it's like, oh, you know, like unlocks this like flurry of like metrics and like new, new targeting capability. Like that's Google ads. You know, it's like no one even gets beyond that. And then I take it over and they spent, you know, a year all season. They're dumping money into this smart campaign. And like I just took one over for a guy in Louisiana and he, they had, he had search terms showing up from like Arizona, Arizona crappy fishing and like you know, bait shop, Louisiana, like just everything, because Google was just taking those few fishing terms and be like, okay, this guy wants fishing terms. Like I'll just grab whatever I can grab. And there was no, no thought process to it at all. And like, obviously no tracking. So I went through and showed him that quick and his jaw almost hit the floor. He's like, he's like, I'm yeah. first off, he was spending the company who was doing it. He was, he was paying them, you know, three, four times what, what I charge to do it, getting robbed, getting no results. So yeah, I mean, it's just, it's, it's tough. It is a really tough thing to do on your own, unless you actually are going to put a little bit of you know, TLC into it and actually try to figure it out and stick it out. Um, anybody who turns yeah. it on for 30, 60 days, you know, your chances of failure are really, really high. Yeah. Well, like I said, I think that marketing is in general, like one of the hardest to find someone who's really good at it and it's going to get you yeah. a good return on your investment. We've worked with you for a while. We've seen what you've been able to do and I appreciate you being willing to kind of teach me a little bit and give me some yeah. insights into how you do it because I think it's something that's extremely valuable. You know, every guide or outfitter out there wants to be able to get new leads. And one thing that I I learned um, from a conversation with Landon Mayer was even if you have a full schedule every year, 
you need to have 15% of your customers be new customers every year because frankly in fly fishing industry it's a bit of an older generation and you know you're you're not always going to get all those customers back so it's important to be able to continue to bring in new leads into your business and whether you're just starting um, or whether you're established it's something that you need and it's something that you can really easily waste a lot of money if you don't know what you're doing and you have um, proven that you know you're good at what you do and you're also a pretty good teacher because i learned a lot so i appreciate you coming on (laughs) thanks yeah yeah of course thanks for having me